rolling on on BTN Live. Lots of obligations on this day for the student athletes, including a game of Jenga, Hawkeyes and Hoosiers. We won't tell you how that came out. You'll have to watch Sports Light with Mike Hall, although I understand you guys have a little bit of a beef with Mr. Hall. Josie Jewell, why don't you just get it out in the open? Okay, yeah, Put it I'll, out there. I'll tell you, I guess. I think he kind of screwed up the clock a little bit on the ABCs. He had uh, timed ABCs, and I think um, Matt probably won, uh, and he gave okay. it one to Indiana. So so it was a clock issue. You think he just didn't, he think, didn't understand think, the yeah. numbers? Because, you know, he didn't go to a Big Ten school. Oh, that might have been it. Yeah. I think it was a manual time issue, yeah. Definitely. Okay. All right. Well, you know, maybe you guys can appeal this to uh, – there's got to be a commissioner of sports light, right? So – you know, maybe before this episode comes out, we can make this thing right. Yeah, sounds uh, good. Good to have you guys with us, Josie Jewell, Matt Vandenberg, Sean Welsh. Uh, welcome, guys. Uh, you, of course, play for the longest tenured coach, not just in the Big Ten, but now in the country. You have the up-close and personal look at, at Kirk Ferentz. So I want to ask each one of you, and Sean, I can start with you. Sure. What, has, what is it about Kirk Ferentz that has allowed him to succeed for as long as he has and, and to be in a position longer than anyone in the sport? Well, he's just an incredible person. I, th I think that's where it starts. You know, um, you can ask any guy that's played here. Um, from the moment I've gotten, when I went to Iowa, um, he, he's given me everything that I need, ample opportunity, um, and he's helped me every step of the way. And I, I think that's really where it starts is just being a great person. And, um, you know, that, that's, that's why he's been around so long. How about from your point of view, Matt? Yeah, kind of piggybacking off of Sean, um, you know, it's about what kind of person you are, what kind of character you have. I mean, he cares about the wins and losses because that's his job, but he really cares about what kind of person you are, and, and, and just as long as you leave the university, a better person than when you showed up. Josie? Yeah, I think it's, you know, the family bond that he creates, uh, you know, with us all on the team. It doesn't matter whether you come from California, whether you come from Maine or Florida, uh, you know, he's going to be able to create, you know, a bond between you all by making you all find some, something that you can compare with, um, something you can find similarities with, and that's just why he's such a great coach. I wasn't sure we were going to see you back here this year. You had a big decision to make as to whether or not you would come back to Iowa or pursue the NFL. What ultimately swayed your decision? Uh, you know, I think it was, you know, the coaching staff believed in me, uh, you know, to come here. Um, and they gave me the opportunity to come here and play. You know, I didn't, I wasn't anything great out of high school at all. Um, and they gave me that opportunity. So, I mean, I think leaving early, uh, it would have, you know, just kind of, it would almost been, for me, it would have been disrespectful to them for, you know, what they've given me, um, for what they've given me, you know, weight-wise, making me the player I am today. Um, so, you know, I love the coaching staff. I love, you know, being a player here. And I don't think I could have left them. And now you look at the linebacking crew you guys have with Bo Bauer and Ben Neiman. You, is this the best linebacking crew in America, in your opinion? Yeah, I don't know if I can say that. Uh, I mean, we do have some, a little bit of experience. Um, you know, we're all seniors. Um, and it was just kind of like our freshman year when we came in. We came in with James Morris, Anthony Hitchens, and Christian Kirksey. Um, and they, they, were, they were a great group of guys um, and just kind of taught us how to, you know, how to, you know, lead by example and, and be, you know, be a great leader for the team. Well, you don't want to say you're the best linebacking crew in America, but th there was an award given to the best offensive line in America last year, the Joe Moore Award, and you guys won it. Sean, and you essentially bring back a virtually this entire unit. How good can the offensive line be this year? Well, as for the Joe Mord Award, um, that's in the past. You know, we're, we're very honored to receive it. Um, you know, it's a tremendous honor for us. Um, but that's in the past for us. You know, it, it really, time come first week, it's not going to matter anymore. Um, you know, it, it's, it's really going to matter what we put out in the field. You guys have a new offensive coordinator in Brian Ferentz, someone who you're both very familiar with, you sure. in, in particular, you know, having worked with him. Give us a sense of how the offense is going to change, evolve. Is it going to be different? What can we expect offensively from this team? And Matt, I'll start with you. Uh, I mean, we're Iowa football. We're going to run the football. You know, like you alluded to earlier, we've got great guys up front like Sean and, and Boone and Ike and James and Keegan and Ross, whoever ends up playing on the offensive line. But uh, we're going to run the football. That's what we do. Um, but having a few wrinkles in the passing game, being able to stretch the field in ways that, uh, that were a little different under Coach Davis, so that's, that's exciting for us. Tell us how the, your sense of how the scheme compares, Sean. Well, you know, I, I've told a few people before, um, being an offensive lineman, we're kind of privileged. Um, you know, we, our, our coordinator is our former position coach, so not a whole lot's changed for us up front. Um, it's like Matt said, you know, I'm not, we're going to run the ball. And uh, a lot of what we do in terms of our fundamentals and 
um, our, our technical skills, it, it hasn't changed at all. Um, we're still kind of run the ball a lot. And I, th I think the biggest changes have been kind of its terminology, for us at least up front. Yeah, I think it's uh, interesting when you talk about kind of this, this change with Coach Ferentz and you look at, you know, the offensive coordinator job changing, you know, uh, changing hands here, but the continuity of the program and, hey, we're Iowa, we're going to run the ball, we're going to do what we do. Do you feel like part of the, the consistency of having had Coach Ferentz there so long is that everyone knows the identity within the program, that there's no question of, hey, you're a wide receiver, but you know when you come in that plan A is this is who we are, we're going to run it. H how much does that consistency help in terms of mentality? I mean, it helps you understand what's expected of you. Uh, I think you're able to flourish when you know why you do something or, uh, or and how to do it. And, you know, like we both said, we're going to run the football. So as a receiver, I mean, our job is to run routes and catch the ball and do all that fun stuff. But uh, you really got to dig in a safety, you know, dig out a safety or, or block a guy on the perimeter to give the guys up front time, let Akram sneak through. And then a lot of times the, the runs that become explosive when a receiver is busting his butt downfield and makes a, makes a big time block. And now Akram, instead of a 12 yard run, he goes for 60. And so understanding that our role is key is something that we need to continue to do. If there is an area where the offense, I think, needs to take a step forward, it probably is the wide receiver spot. You were injured last year, and it felt like when you went down, you guys kind of you know, lost your way a little bit in the passing game. So I think probably the most obvious question on the minds of, of Hawkeyes fans is, how are you feeling physically? No, I'm feeling great. You know, I'm able to do every cut that I need to do, uh, whatever my job is on any given play or, or drill that I've been doing over the past two months. Uh, it's been great. Uh, you know, conditioning-wise, I'm still working on getting in the best shape that I can be in. Uh, but thankfully, we've got a, a month of camp, you know, to finish that out before the season. So, uh, but I'm feeling great. Who else can step up in that group? Uh, we got a lot of young guys. I mean, as you alluded to, I think we had six or seven guys join us uh, from June on. And, you know, so we're going to have a lot of young guys that need to step up. But uh, I know Coach Brian Ferentz has talked about Nick Easley. Uh, has, he had a good spring. But really all we can do is just go to work and try to get better than we were yesterday. Uh, Sean, I want to ask you, you went public last week for the first time about dealing with depression. I thought it was really, a, first of all, an incredibly well-crafted statement. Thank you. Uh, really well written, and I thought really courageous to kind of step forward and, and talk about that. Tell me a little bit about kind of why you felt it was important to, to make that, to let everyone know kind of what you had gone through. Well, it's, it's an important issue that I feel doesn't get enough coverage. Um, it's, it's very prevalent, and, um, you know, I, I had the platform to, you know, say something about it and share my story. Um, you know, and it originally started started as something to help people out, and it's, it turned out, you know, unexpectedly to become something really cathartic for me, you know. How so? Um, you know, I'll get notes from people, just random strangers, you know, email or social media, um, people that I hardly knew in high school that will come forward and share their story with me and um, talk about, you know, how... It helped them, you know, go see someone or um, help them keep an open mind about medication. Um, it, it's stuff like that, notes that I get, it made it, you know, worthwhile. Josie, how educational was that for guys on the team? And what's it been like to kind of to see Sean go through this here over the last few years? Yeah, I mean, like you said, it's it's a very courageous act. And the thing is, it's so awesome about Sean is he didn't do it for himself. You know, he didn't do it for attention. It was for attention for other people. He's not doing it for himself. It's for other people to get, you know, maybe better treatment or to, you know, understand that there's other ways or, you know, it's okay to have stuff like this. I mean, it's it's just a courageous act that he had. And, I mean, we're all behind him, and, you know, we just wish the best for him. Now, you guys both got engaged last year, right? Uh, are you married now? Yeah, yeah that's why that guy, I thought you're right. You're actually married. Are there double dates here at all? He already had his. No, 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 I mean, like, you know, we, you know, you're couples. Oh, right? no you guys, double dates, no. No, 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 no you guys don't hang out together? Oh, Maybe we can do that know. later. All right, well, okay. but, but you both Fine. you both proposed publicly, right? Did you have a public proposal also? I mean, mine was only, like, three people in front of me. Yeah, and I didn't right. have as many but, people as that. Right, yeah, yeah, yours was after a game, yeah, correct? Yeah, you got to put her in a position where she can't say no. Well, that's what I'm going to ask you, right? When you have, when it's not just a one-on-one -on -one deal, when you have a few people there or a stadium full of people there, I mean, is there a thought that goes through your mind of what if she says no? 
Yeah, that'd be unfortunate. Um, <laughs> you, know, you do all that planning for just to say no, and you buy the ring just for to say no. Yeah, yeah, I hate for that to happen. That wouldn't have been good. So it didn't cross your mind. You didn't say uh, maybe I ought to do this in more of a closed <laughs> setting. No, it didn't really cross my, my mind. A I guess. Bit. How about you? I mean, that took a, that took some guts. I mean. I knew from a while, you know, about a week into the relationship, she was the one. It was just a matter of when, so I, I didn't have any doubt. It was just a matter of her figuring it out, too. <laughs> In essence. Or, or yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> coming, coming to the same conclusion. Uh, guys, I want to ask you a little bit about your schedule, your crossover games, Penn State, Ohio State, Michigan State. It's pretty tough. What do you think when you look at that schedule? Yeah, I mean, it's awesome, you know, to play teams um, that, I guess, are touted to be better and they have a lot of talent. Uh, you, you know, you want to play teams that are better. You don't want to, you know, play the bottom teams at all. You look, uh, you know, you look in your Big Ten and you want to play the best of the best. If you want to be the best, you're going to have to beat them. So I think that's just, you know, coming to the season, we're going to have to, you know, give it our all, you know, during camp um, and be able to come, you know, ready firing during the middle and uh, beginning of the season. What do you think when you see that schedule? Uh, I think it's exciting. You know, uh, we played Ohio State my true freshman year, Michigan State my true freshman year. So it's been a while since I've been able to play those teams. And I've never played Penn State. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't make the trip uh, last year. So I think it's cool to go to different venues. Like we get to go to Michigan State. I, I kind of see that approach to it too. But I I'm just excited to play. Aside from Kinnick Stadium, what's the venue you've most enjoyed playing in? I'll ask each one of you. I'll start with you, Sean. I'd say the most electric that I've been in uh, was Penn State. It's It was an unreal environment. Matt? Yeah, Wisconsin was pretty fun. Uh, when we went up there in 2015, that was a pretty crazy environment. Yeah, well, I'm going to have to go right in between both of you, and I said both of them. I mean, that's I've been uh, people that have asked, I've said both of those all day. I mean, the whiteout during night when we were there at Penn State, that was an electric, energized stadium. And then, you know, Wisconsin, when they have the jump around, I mean, it's it's pretty crazy and pretty energetic at both. So many great places in this league. Great to have all three of you up here with us, and uh, congratulations to you <laughs> on the you. nuptials. <laughs> all right, gentlemen. Uh, our